So it's not rocket science that what you consume changes the way you think. I'm not here to bore you with a lecture about why you should care about what you're consuming on social media. What I do want to show you is the new show I've been watching. It's called Too Hot to Handle. Have you heard about it? Too Hot to Handle is this new hit dating show where people just basically don't do the dirty for money. And it's moderated by this host named Lana, who's not a real person. She's actually a robot. And what got me thinking was this AI character is essentially what the contestants are interacting with. And it literally got me interacting with my Alexa more. Hello. Alexa, shut up! Like, anyways, I've been interacting with my Alexa more, and it's to the point where I'm like, wait a second, was I this comfortable around Alexa a few days ago? Because ever since I've been watching Too Hot to Handle, yes, I've been losing brain cells, but two, I've been acting really comfortable around my technology. And this got me thinking, how are we being brainwashed by media to interact in the real life? Now, if you don't believe me, let me give you an example. So in the show Too Hot to Handle, they literally said that Lana was listening to them and studying them, so that Lana I could get to know them better. Does that not sound creepy? Like, take a look at this. For the first 12 hours, Lana will be watching our horny guests in the wild. <laughs> Bruh, come on. Is that not creepy? And then towards the end of the show, Lana starts giving them recommendations to go on dates and like they literally do it. And the funny thing is I have not seen anybody on social talk about this. Like nobody that's watching the show has ever made a comment about it. And isn't that interesting, right? Because a few months ago, everyone was shitting on AI and saying that, you know, Alexa and all these voice technologies are weird and scary. And now a minute ago, there's a TV show about it and people aren't saying a word about it. So this is an example of what I call the normalizing effect. And today we're gonna talk about it. How is the media that you're watching affecting the way that you go about life? And are you influenced or just brainwashed? If you want to know more, all you got to do is keep on watching. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for clicking on today's video. My name's Jade and on this channel we talk about social media and psychology to bring you what's new and trendy in the market. I myself is an entrepreneur. I run a few businesses in social media. So I can definitely tell you that I'm fascinated by brain dead shows because then you can make a video about what you've learned. As you can tell, I watched a show called Too Hot to Handle. I'm so embarrassed to say it, but I'm kind of into it. It's this really horny show about people not being able to do the dirty, and it's really entertaining, I'm not gonna lie. My issue was, this show is literally so stupid, I was trying to like at least not go brain dead and take a little bit of intellectual information away from the show, but I literally couldn't find anything until I discovered a little weird thing called interacting with voice technology. And this is where today's video will go about. I'm gonna go over three examples of how you could be potentially brainwashed and why I think media is normalizing AI. Okay, we're just gonna jump right into it. The first example that you might not be even aware about is The Cut Dating Show, okay? If you don't know what I'm talking about, you might not watch Cody Ko. He's been really doing these like reacting videos. And today I'm gonna show you it and reenact again because I'm not original and I only copy content. Okay, so The Cut Dating Show is basically, just, just take a look at the first five seconds. When the button lights up red, either player may press it and swap out their date for a new person. You have been eliminated. Okay, so as you can see, the button talks, the button recommends, the button is what gets you a new date. This show, by the way, is extremely, again, stupid, but really entertaining. But again, no one's noticing how creepy the show really is. Let's take a look at these parts that make me question why no one's talking about it, okay? So first of all, in the beginning of the show, it's just basically people going on dates, but the button starts to talk like they know the person. Like, check out this frame. Was on. Yes, sir. When was the last time you had sex? Um, a month ago. <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, the button's just asking questions to the contestant, and that's cool and normal, but little do we know, this button is actually taking this information as data and computing what the next move is. Like, take a look at this next scene. Yes, sir. Well, you know, a person that's healthy. Like, this button is savage on this date this dude's having. Like, out of nowhere, this poor girl has to, like, find out that he only likes fix girls and, like, embarrasses them. Like, button, come on. What I'm trying to say is in this quick little scene, it's a great example of how this artificial intelligence button is collecting information and then using it for hopefully the good, but in this case, embarrassment. Now, if you're like, Jade, why is this relevant to today's video? Well, it actually brings me to my lesson a little bit about artificial intelligence. So let's go cue that quick lessons right now. Now, I am not a data scientist. My dad is actually one and literally every day I see my dad take data or giant spreadsheets and make predictions out of it And this is what he told me so step one is you need a lot of data So typically information about a person location age demographic anything and step two is with this data A data scientist will basically program how the machine will learn for example If you are in California, it's very obvious that you might speak English, right? So what a data scientist does is kind of compute into the artificial intelligence, you know Hey, if someone's in California, they probably will speak English so make sure you 
you guys tie that together. So then step three is once the computer kind of learns information that the human inputs, it can start to make predictions. And sometimes it doesn't get it right, but over time with more and more data and feedback, the AI can actually train itself to get smarter to almost a human brain. And like I said, I've watched my dad do this for work and I've literally seen him train AI before, which is really, really interesting. But in regards to how this relates to today's video, you're literally watching people train AI as we speak and no one's talking about it. Like as a kid, I would always think my dad was this weird scientist, although he is still a weird scientist. I didn't really understand the work and I thought it was really, really weird. But now that it's on media and YouTube and literally shows, it's a little bit crazy how training AI is as simple as this dating show. To understand what I mean, I'm gonna pull up my second example called The Circle on Netflix. So this show essentially is instead of a button talking, it's this TV device that's talking and people interact with it. And in the show, they give information and then the computer gives recommendation. Check this out. Social experiment where players don't meet face to face. What? They only communicate through the circle. 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 All right, so let's rewind real quick. So you just saw that in the show, the contestants start talking to this TV. But the weird thing is, guys, the TV no longer exists just in the living room. It exists everywhere. It's in the bathroom. It's in the bedroom. It's actually in random objects. And there are literally so many TV screens in the show. It can't make you wonder why there is. Okay, now don't get me wrong. I'm going to give my prediction at the very end of the video of why I think media is making this a trend now. So don't attack me yet. But I do have to say it's a little bit interesting how this AI character is involved in literally so many of the personal ways we live. And I know it's nothing new because although the circle is just a TV show, in real life, Amazon launched something called Amazon Key, where basically all the packages that you get can arrive in your home. There's so many Alexa smart devices like Alexa itself and also its products. Sorry if your Alexa is lighting up right now. I'm really sorry. What I'm trying to say is there's already innovations inside homes that are related to smart devices, but I do have to say it's just a little bit different when it's in your bathroom. Like there's for sure cameras on these things. Like would we really feel comfortable doing it without the show? Now we don't because we saw it on the show. So now we're not freaked out when we see Alexa hanging out in the bathroom. Damn it, I said Alexa again. All right, so my last example of why I think media is obsessed with this AI character is again in the Too Hot to Handle show. So guys, I was actually calling my friend John Fish. He is in artificial intelligence in school and we were just chatting about why we think like this character on Too Hot to Handle, which is Lana, is just so friendly and normalized. And one of the things he mentioned is it could be that TV shows want to start to get more AI producers because a host of a show really makes or breaks the show, right? And if you are making a TV show, series, you want to make sure your host is great and there's minimal risk. So why not make a robot? Because you can control every single word that's being said on the show. And I definitely think that that totally makes sense on a production level. Like what if more TV shows just want AI devices because it's cheaper for them and they can control everything they're saying. And it's not too far in the future when basically all acting could be replaced by AI. I'm not sure if anyone would just talk of like two AI devices talking, but the point is it's definitely interesting the way media is using it as a host and how it's actually helping them because Lana, the AI character, is actually like a total meme on the show and people really do love the character and the viewer's reaction is typically positive. So that's something to note. Now the last point I really want to make is just this real specific scene on the show that really scared me. And it didn't scare me because AI is scary because at the end of the day, AI is already here. It's already taken so many jobs and it's only going to keep increasing. What I think was scary is the way that we are trusting it with so much personal information and taking recommendations and almost using it. So check out the scene in Too Hot to Handle when one of the contestants literally listens to the robot and goes on a date with someone the robot recommends. Check it out. Francesca. No, no, no. Don't do this to me. As you know, this retreat helps you make meaningful connections. It can also test those connections. Your company has been requested on a date by Corey. Okay, so cool, like Francesca, the girl that just got asked out is like, oh my God, like I have a boyfriend already, but like I have another date. So the logical reasoning would be like not to go on the date with the guy because you already have a boyfriend, but you know what? This AI thing says I have a date, so I have to go anyways, right? If she really had a thing with Harry, she wouldn't have even come on a date, so I'm gonna run with it. How would you feel about this situation? 
obviously I think you're very attractive. Like literally they're just going on a date when a robot set this up. Like this is not the first time this happens on the show. Like there is multiple occasions when Lana steps in and creates a date together. And like there's even this whole scene where they have these wristbands and like when it lights up green, you know, they can kiss and like this whole robot is controlling it. And if you can't tell, I'm just like, what's going on? Okay, I digress. Point is, it's a really hilarious show. I never really thought much about this Lana character until I just started to connect the dots with my dad's previous background in AI and some lighthearted comedy that's kind of interesting with the host they use. Long story short, the question is, what can we take away from this? The first thing is, I'm watching too much trash Netflix and I need to get off Netflix because it's literally losing brain cells for me. The second thing I've learned is that smart home devices are just the start. We are starting to interact more and more with technology to the point where we'll trust it with our relationship advice. And I don't think it's by accident that more shows are doing this. I'm only giving three examples of what I've seen, but I believe that in the future, we'll be able to talk to our walls, our cars, everything will be able to be voice activated. And it's solely because it makes our life more efficient. I don't know if we all agree with this, but the point of AI and automation is to make our lives easier and to save time. Now, I think it could be used for good and for bad. It's all the matters of who has the power. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if Amazon started to buy homes and literally started to build smart homes where all the walls were able to be voice activated and you never had to lift a finger. It just, things would move. Like all the lights would turn on when you wanted to. And I think we're starting to see that already. We definitely should be more cautious about what we watch. And this is just one example of how media can influence our decisions. Suddenly it's not weird to interact with a smart home. It's not weird to talk to a robot because it's just a show. It's just a part of, you know, what we see online. And from last year to now, I feel like people are more accepted to AI and maybe it's through media. I just definitely think it's no lie. What you consume affects the way you interact in real life. And whether it's for good or for bad, I definitely think just being aware of it is so important to humanity. I really believe that the difference between brainwashed and being influenced is being aware of what you're consuming. And just by realizing and watching this video, I hope you realize that we're able to control what we consume. And I'm not saying that it's important to like cut out all AI, which is not bad. Like I believe it's going to help us, but I definitely think what else are we consuming that we don't even know we're interacting with? Whether it's bad health choices or really bad toxic relationships and friendships, don't let the media that you consume control your life in a negative way. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you guys want to be the next comment winner, all you have to do is comment below. My dad might do a video all about AI. So if you want him to actually teach a real lesson about artificial intelligence, comment below. I would beg him to go on the channel, but it's only with your support and help. I love you, Darma Nation. Subscribe to the channel for more psychology and marketing advice. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.